filmed in front of a studio audience in San Francisco, California. I'm Richard Brevik, and this is Expose UX, a new startup competition. Well, in a way, your app has failed. I'm only going to be interested in that if I have an academic interest. I, I, it needs more. Judged on user experience, not their business plan. You gotta love the people that love the plants. You can't just love the pattern matching technology. So you do actually right. have a structure, which is the visual structure, the photo. Right. Mm -hmm. um, get rid of the words. Are they speaking with their users? So I think understanding that kind of soul of where people are trying to get their uses met is really critical. Are they following good design patterns? Well, there's yeah, a nobody balance. likes that. You, right. don't wanna, you, know. you don't want to overload a screen either. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's a balance. Does their UX match their business objectives? Using metrics as a design tool is huge and I think wildly underutilized right now in our field. Let's meet the experts. Pavani Gabriel Pettit is the founder, publisher, and editor-in-chief of UX Matters. Kate Rudder is a principal for Intelletta. And Indy Young is a freelance software design researcher at IndyYoung.com. Presented by Big Design Events, and filmed on location at General Assembly. This episode is going to be a flashback to the season one format, where we're going to focus on just one startup, giving the experts a little bit more time to dig deeper. That startup is Garden Answers with Alex Shaw. Let's welcome to the stage. Alex, welcome to Expose UX. You'll have 30 seconds for your elevator pitch. Are you ready? Yes. And start. So people have an innate curiosity about the things that they see in their daily lives. Um, for some of us, it's architecture. For some of us, it's art. Garden Answers uh, actually is trying to help those who are interested in plants. Uh, our app is pretty simple. You take a photo, you get your phone out, you take a photo of a plant, and it will tell you uh, the characteristics of, of that plant, how to care for it, and any diseases that might affect that plant. Prior to working on Garden Answers, uh, I worked on FaceDouble. FaceDouble was a fun app where um, you took a photo and it would tell you your celebrity look like. So in many ways, the same kind of pattern. Uh, uh, and we put some patents around that and we sold the company. And Since then, uh, the neighborhood has gotten to know, oh, Alex is an image recognition guy. And so one day, the, the neighbor comes over Peter and he says, you know, Alex and Anson are going for a walk and uh, we saw all these wonderful plants in the neighborhood, but we don't know what they are. You know, you really need to build this app. You know how to do it. Just take a picture of a plant. Simple. Take a picture of a plant and we'll be able to, um, you know, find out what that plant is and just build it for us. We want it. And so kind of that was the genesis of it. I mean, I explained to him that that's a really difficult problem, not an easy image processing problem. But three years later, we finally got to a point where you can get an instant answer and I'm quite pleased with the result. All right, so speaking with the experts earlier, I'm pretty sure that there's another story there that we haven't heard yet, but we'll dig into that a little bit later. Okay, sure. But let's first do your two-minute demo. Sure, I'd love to. So we're opening up the app, and what you see in the app is you have four basic concepts. Uh, one is to take a photo, that's what everybody does. Uh, then you can ask an expert if uh, you need to help, help where you can't get an automated answer. Your question or answer are your past answers that we've asked, answered in the past. And then we have a, a kind of app help, which has an FAQ and other things in there. So let's just go right into taking a photo. This is what most people do. You just say, click on the camera and find your plant. In this case, um, we have this beautiful plant, which some of you may know what it is. And immediately we get answers. We're going to see a, a list of plants that are really similar in characteristics to the plant we took a photo of. So, in, in some cases, you can do this. You can kind of look if you forgot what your plant looks like. You can kind of go through here and look at the list. And you know, really, most of the time, the top list is one you're gonna. You can, it's, it's really obvious that I think everyone in the room that this first plant is the one that we, that we want to match. So we can now click on that to get details. What happens now is that we look through our database of answers, about 150,000 of them, and we pull up all the ones that match moth orchids. And so now you can get here sort of that first entry is going to be the Wikipedia article. And as you go down, you're going to start getting actual community-based questions that have been answered by our experts. 
Um, and so because orchid is such a common plant, I mean, we just have hundreds of these. So you can kind of page down through them and really learn over time every possible characteristic, what region it grows in, what kind of watering it needs, what kind of disease may affect it. Um, you know, here it's Hussein, you know, does not tolerate temperatures below 60, 65, things like that. Um, so uh, that's, that's how most people use the app and uh, that's the end of my demo. Thank you. So now uh, we'll give the floor to the experts so you can ask questions and uh, lead the way through that and provide recommendations. I'd like to take it back to your creation story. Sure. You said your neighbors were walking through the neighborhood. They saw some plants they didn't know what they were and they wanted you to write this app. Why did they want to know what those plants were? Well, um I mean, it kind of goes with the theme that I said at the beginning. People have, and it's not gardeners, people have a curiosity about things around them, right? It just happens to be that plants can be put in kind of this format, right? You can get an answer really quickly. You know, maybe that was something, I think it was something that they saw in someone else's yards and they, they wanted in their own yard. Uh, and, you know, and getting the answer, I mean, I guess they could knock on the door and they could talk to the landscape person who was working the, the neighborhood to find out what that plant was, but it's just easier to be able to do it from a phone. So I think your origin story is interesting, and I always look at that like Indy did and referenced, that that's really where the, the somehow the heart of the UX is going to be, right? I think your neighbor's name was Peter, yeah. is that right? So, so Peter's walking along, here's this strange thing, right? It's yeah. like, what the hell is that flower? And here's a tool that will help them understand that. I did notice in your story, you mentioned the take a photo of your flower, that's what everybody does. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing that should have visual hierarchy and prominence in your UI, right? right? So whether or not you enter directly in, you know, a screen deeper, the fact that this is an equally balanced UI, I think, is doesn't really help your participants do that thing that they're there, there to do. Yeah, I so then that. backing back out to the UX part of it. Right. You're, 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 you're just saying like the, the, the actual space here, the right. fact that the buttons are all equal. Sure, 25% chance I'm going to hit app health and settings. You might want to balance that a little right. differently. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The other thing about, like, when you talk about Peter and his experience, or everybody is curious, which, you know, you debate, then I debate, but I think you want this product to be for some people that are a specific kind of curious. I think you really need to be passionate about what those people are trying to do after their question is answered. Right. Are they trying to keep their plant from dying? Are they trying to buy something? Are they trying to share it and have everybody in their Facebook community look at this weird thing I found on a hike? And now right. I know the name of it. So I think understanding that kind of soul of where people are trying to get their uses met is really critical. And I think that will lead you to make different choices in the yeah. UI. No, no. That's very fair. I mean, even with Peter, I didn't ask him what the next step was the next logical step would have been if he was able to get his answer instantly. Just I haven't done it. That, that's what I was easy. thinking, that next page that you get to should really, there are different things that you might want to do. You might want to buy a plant. You might want to take care of a plant. You might have a sick plant. There, there are different tasks that you'd be there for, and that's on that screen, it doesn't present much. But it, right. could, it could present more of those options about why are you interested in this plant. Right. But go back to that other screen when you're talking about the comparison and all the answers. So you said under details, you said there's hundreds and hundreds of answers and responses, and you said that like it was a good thing. Tell me more about how people can pick a good one from the wealth of information here. Yeah, um, that's a great question. Let's go to that page. <laughs> so that's a page after this one. So this initial page is showing, um, you know, trying to help you find if you have a match, right? So I got a match now. I'm going into my database of answers. What I did to make some rhyme or reason to it is, is I look at the photo that was submitted and I order my answers based on the visually, what's visually similar in the database. So that's why you're seeing that something purple here as the first answer. Probably the next one will be a little bit purple. And as you go further, well, these are all purple. Maybe if you go really far down, it might go that they have something that's not purple. It's a white orchid. So I'm ordering it based on that, not based on the content that's in these answers. One of the things that occurred to me is like, do I have an academic interest? Because the thing that I saw at the very beginning was that I'm only going to be interested in that if I have an academic interest. So you know, right. if, if at this point you structure it by what kind of a viewpoint is the reviewer or, or person contributing the information taking, right. then you're more likely to give people the information they're interested in. Again, am I trying to grow stuff? Am I, do I want to buy something? 
So you do actually right. have a structure, which is the visual structure, the photo. Right. Mm -hmm. um, get rid of the words. If you want the words, yeah. then you can go down deeper. But you don't need the words right now. You just need the picture and the name of the thing. I see what you're saying. Uh, but, but, but I kind of showed that on the previous page. Go right, back to the previous finish. page. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm terrible at interrupting people. I should write here. I should write here. Yeah. You should just get rid of it. Because what are people yeah. really trying to do? What I'd like to do is ask a question. I guess it was Peter. <laughs> get rid of this app entirely. And if Peter asked the, 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 the gardener, right. what, what is this thing? The gardener maybe uh, says, you know, it's, it's a super exotic such and such. Sure. And it takes me you know, an extra 16 hours a week to, to keep <laughs> this alive, right? right? And so then Peter has some sort of reaction, not unlike Pavanese. <laughs> right. Right? Right. So, here, so here we're trying to follow it down. Like, what is Peter after? And then how is Peter different than, uh, you know, Kunyi or Sam or, you know, someone else? Right. Stepping kind of back out of the specific case examples, there's a terrific framework, Jobs to be Done. As an entrepreneur, you're probably familiar with that. But I think this kind of, you know, we could debate a lot of what use case is possible. It's kind of like you guess, then I'll guess. But we can't answer those. And it sounds like right now you can't either. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest problem, is what is the job that this product is going to do for someone? And you have infinite choices, which is hard as an entrepreneur. But you can just buckle down, like pick one, right? right. And if it doesn't turn out, pick another one. But I think understanding what is the job that this product needs to do for someone? Is it saving you so you can have your char and eat it too? Or is it like finding that weird thing on a, on a field trip, right? But if you can double down on that job to be done, I think it'll find clarity in how to make some of these UI ch um, decisions that you're going with, right? right? Yeah. So um, I think that's pretty much like all I got on this, except as an entrepreneur, to recognize that's a hard challenge. And uh, you have to do it anyway. Otherwise, frankly, it's just going to be a hobby and kind of diddling around with it. And I think that's, this has much more promise than that. Yeah, yeah. This technology has a lot of promise. There are a lot of different things you could do with it. You could s use this technology in multiple applications. And then once you chose your user for a specific application, you could provide extra functionality would, that would give them just what they need, like diagnosing plant diseases for gardeners or you know, like if you wanted to create a market out of this thing by basically saying, oh, I want that plan. Where can I get it in my neighborhood? It's location-based services, you know? Yeah. You, you, you could leverage that to make money without charging people money for yeah. stuff, yeah. you know? What Pavani is saying is you yeah. can use the same code base and a mm -hmm. bunch of different front ends. So yeah. it's not like you pull it out and put it back in, it's branched. Right, yeah. right. I'm curious, what kind of metrics do you do you track to see if people are not just using it but successful with it? Like if someone could if you could count people in a quantitative way and say, if eighty percent of my people that use this get this thing done, that's a win. Like right. what would that be? I, I'm looking at um, after someone downloads the app, what is the number of times they actually either do a, a keyword search or a plant search? Um, and that's around ten to fifteen times. Uh, after they download it, uh, like what other things should I be looking at? What other metrics would you say I'm, I'm ignoring that I probably should be looking at? I, I wish I could just answer like the right metrics are, but they're again good frameworks, etc. I think looking at pirate metrics, you know, is a is a good acquisition kind of retention, referral revenue, are so it's oh help me out so it's uh, <laughs> Dave McClure right yeah Dave McClure kind of popularized this 500 startups and it's okay. um, I think it's acquisition uh, registration probably not that one but retention referral and revenue so it, infinitely Googleable. But the idea behind the, that framework is that it's almost a funnel of the type of behaviors that you want. So right. if you, you can't get referral if you don't have anybody using your app, so you have to start with kind of acquisition. And the other terrific resource, I think, is Lean Analytics, which is a book by O'Reilly. It's part of the Lean Startup series. Um, Alistair Kroll and Ben Yaskovitz. And, and that goes through how does an early stage product identify kind of the key metric that matters. And the format of a, matter, of a metric that you could be looking for, and again, I don't know the depth of your app, but it might be the um, number of photos, different photos, not just like retakes, but like different photos per user per week over a period of six months. Right. 
And you've really got to dial that in and do some nice algorithmic kind yeah. of study to, to figure that out. But it's one number and it's comparative so you can see it move over time. When you start looking at how your, your UI and your interactions are being built, by having that number as a goal, you're automatically going to be trying to build to make that number better. And it really focuses your product thinking. It's a really interesting, using metrics as a design tool is huge and I think wildly underutilized right now in our field. Yeah. Uh, I think there's some qualitative um, metrics that you could do too that you would tie to those different particular behavioral audience segments that you're trying to support. Um, so the person who's trying to start a garden for the first time. Right. Um, there's going to be maybe, uh, what's the word, when you do it over and over again, you ask the same question over and over again and you're still not getting it, um, that's a fail. Whereas if you're asking different kinds of questions about different kinds of things and there's some progression, then that's a success, Right. that kind of a thing. Um, you, you, would, you would have to dial it in, dial it in with the different um, types of behavioral audience segments that you're going right. for. Does that mean, you know, I'm finding uh, like a novice gardener and I'm finding an actual like real person and like having yeah, an interview yeah, with Yeah, you're them? actually really, <laughs> really interacting with real people. Right. Um, you know, or you can interact with the actual, sorry, you can do it through a phone. <laughs> I do all my research through yeah. a phone. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it could yeah. be done real time. You see chat on websites all the time. Right. There's, right. Somebody could make a living being yeah. an expert on your site because they're always there ready to answer questions and they're right. really knowledgeable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting a well, little bit of that already from, because I have like, uh, I don't know, I have 3,000 reviews. And in that reviews, I mean, I read them. And you know, it gives me a lot of good information, which is similar to what you're saying, like where the gaps are in the product. Because I, you know, I look at the one stars, I look at the five stars, even both of them give some information yeah. along those lines. But if you can pick, you, if you go into the actual person's data and see it, right. then or, or pick someone who seems to be uh, thrashing on one sort of thing and go and talk to them. Right. Um, do it with your experts too on right. the other side because right. they may say, oh "My God, I keep." answering the same question over and over again. Um, well, maybe the answer isn't that very clear. Right. Uh, maybe some changes need to be made with those kinds of answers. Or maybe it's uh, a, a, a different problem asking for a solution. With yeah. horticulture, I'll bet that um, there are uh, communication issues, the clarity, words, um, using vocabulary that you learn as an expert may not translate to someone who is not an expert yes. or even someone who's um, somewhere along that continuum uh, still doesn't know, you know, the yeah. Latin word for the disease no, I, or something. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, at the end of it, it is a difficult, it's really, really difficult because someone's asking expert because the automated software didn't work, right? And that means that it's, it's a tough image to understand and it's usually an immature plant or it's some grass or it's like you know you need to know the context to answer the question and the end user doesn't know that they need to give all this context to answer the question i mean if it were a real-time dialogue though that could happen in the app Yes. In that conversation between the person wanting information and the person who could provide it, they might say, oh, gee, could you take a picture of that bug for me and then look at that? And, mm -hmm. you know. yeah, yeah. and maybe, maybe along the way it's only like 50 cents and you only have to pay 50 cents to find out that we don't know yet and you have to wait until next spring. Right. <laughs> You're getting how many daily active users did you say? Um, the number of uh, questions I get are 30,000 a day. So actually, it's, I'll be truthful. It's 30,000 on Saturday and Sunday, and it drops <laughs> off a little bit during the week. People get less curious yeah. during the week, apparently, yeah. about their plans. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Sunday's the big day. Yeah, it so is. Big day for asking about my plans. After church thing. So those numbers are impressive. Like, clearly you've capitalized on some kind of behavior that a lot of people have and that you, know, that you suspected and that Peter showed you in you know, your little walk. And, right. and so um, what would be most helpful for you right now from us? Like, this is a rare opportunity, and we need to right. make sure your needs are met. What are you trying to do with this? I guess the one that comes to mind and, you know, but maybe this might not be the one that my customer needs. When, when the user goes through the effort of getting an identification, and, and I can actually, I could go through an example. They pick a picture of grass. They take a picture of something that's not flowering. And you look at the results and they all look the same. Um, and, and so then I have this Ask the Expert feature, uh, but, but it's almost like a, 
I almost feel like everyone who, who ends up in the Ask the Expert part of the app, it's like a huge disappointment. Yeah. Right. Well, because, in a way, your app has failed because for right. whatever reason, I mean, they, right. I'm not, you know, that's not personal accusation. Right. It's just it's hard and that data might not be there. Right. So, yeah, it is failure. Yeah. And, well, and then it's a double mint whammy because not only have you failed to be able to use the app successfully because your plan is complicated to identify, um, but then now I'm hitting you with the $2 whammy. The technology isn't perfect, right? So how do I, how do I, how do I mitigate the, the imperfect technology? I think Pavani is on to something with the idea of um, guiding, whether it's an actual live person or not, but if you're out in the Yosemite hiking and there's a field of grass and there's this really weird grass, but it's not in flower, and even the phrase in flower is a horticultural phrase, which not everybody right. just throws off, right? right? You don't know it's supposed to be in flower before yeah. you can identify it. You have to walk them through it. Right. Um, and, and, and actually, it, I made a change. I, I mean, to interrupt, but okay. see, that says take a fo photo of your flower. Yeah. And I put a flower there. Uh -huh. The original app is actually take a photo of your plant and had leaves there. But a lot of flowers don't look like that. No, I know. I realize that. <laughs> and at different stages, they don't. Yeah, but it's yeah. me just, I just desperately trying to mitigate the experience. I, uh, it needs more. I right. think there can be more guidance along the lines of actually having someone there to say, well, this is a kind of plant that flowers once a season. We have a really hard time distinguishing it from these other five plants unless the flower is present. Right. That kind of information, right? right? Or this is a grass. Grasses are notorious here. You know, here are the 16 different kinds of grasses that are similar to this. Oh, if you can show us the root system, <laughs> then maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like, people I guess. are going to love well, to see that in Yosemite and rip what's in the meadows. <laughs> But you're all on to something, right? You can make people feel smart for asking. They want right. to feel smart. They want to feel right. good about being curious. They want to feel like right. their answers are going to get met. But most people are pretty okay if they understand they have a complicated ask. Right. It's just how can you, how can the product well, let, let give a voice to get them smart? And let you tell me if, it, if I'm trying to imagine in my head. So let's say you go through and you take a photo. Actually, let me just do it. You take a photo. And I, I think starting there is actually a mistake because take a photo of your flower doesn't actually tell them that they're going to be identifying it. Right. Is that correct? This, this uh, actual screen with all that word salad up there, Yeah. Um, no, no one's going to read it. Yeah. They want to take a photo at this point, right. so just take the damn photo. Right. Um, what I'm talking about is a, an a initial and the secondary and maybe tertiary photo session, right? So you take the photo, you come back and you say, not results, but oh, this looks like uh, one right. of these things that only f we can only identify apart from these five based on their flower. Can you give it, give us a good picture of the flower? Right. Well, or, well, right, so what I was gonna say, yeah. I don't have to try, I can just talk through okay. it. Um, what I was gonna say is that yes, when you take a photo of something like this, like a grass, right? I'm going to look at the search results. I know everything the search results are grasses. And I have, a, I know the, the 15 categories of things. And I know the categories are problematic. So yes, I can, at that point, have it go down a different path in the app, right? That will maybe better handle that situation, right? And, but, you know, I have, to, I have to think about what the visual is when you go you down running, that path. Aren't you running into problems with the quality of cameras? We heard of a yeah. conversation earlier. You need a macro lens. If you want to take pictures of grasses, you need a macro lens right. and, and get a really, really high quality right. image. Then you could probably tell. But right. with a, a camera phone, you know, you, you can't right. really tell well enough. So the good news is, is there's actually a lot of precedent for this. I mean, just go, go. have you downloaded any birding apps? No. Oh my God. So those birder people, those people are crazy, right? right? You've got, and God love them, I've got some in my family, but they've got books and they have like this whole set of right. elements across that ecosystem and basically you're activating that for plants. And I think that that's an important and noble thing. But there might right. be some interaction patterns that you can learn from more mature products that will help you better lead people through a flow of this identification, potentially success, and if not success, escalating to an expert, which might be financially valuable for them. Right. Or looking at other jobs to be done that might lead you to different business models to explore. So I think that that's, that's a decision that's before any more development happens on this, um, you right. know, continue to serve right. whatever community you've got, yeah. but really start to prototype out those better flows and see if you can make some decisions that won't lead you into more and more um, messy waters 
Right. Right. Like having right. a, a you know eight hundred well, answers right? related to yeah. a match. Was his specific pain point very clear for you? No, I think that's what we're trying to get at. I yes. mean, the the technology's clear, and the use case is not unclear. But I wouldn't say I'm real convinced about the need or the actual problem or the benefit to someone that you saw. I have always had a startup mentality, and I know that you need a business model. So I think to combine that research, both of these ladies have more research emphasis than I do, but to combine that kind of research with a business model so that you can validate that you're providing a valuable service that would really mean something to your target user and tweak it until it is, and that takes research, you know, to figure out, okay, what's it lacking? What's, how could you improve the capabilities of the app to make it ideal for that particular user that you're targeting? But, you know, choose one yes. that actually has a business model. If you want to eventually get VC funding, you need to have a business model for that user that you're really focusing on. And if, you're, if you are going to focus on Peter, then I think my idea for getting relationships yes. with... Yep with people who sell plants yeah. would do it. Yeah. I think be always able to answer the phrase, uh, Peter is my person, and with my garden answers, Peter can X. And having that answer that is whatever the X, you know, plant a plant in his garden or whatever, it needs to be valuable. If you want a business instead of the hobby, if it needs to be valuable enough that someone will pay for that privilege or that response or that, you know, that service. And I do disagree. I don't think you need to be a venture-funded startup to be successful. In fact, I think that's the best way to give away the future of your company. But I do think you need a customer. And I think you need a, and that might be, you know, yeah. if you're built it to flip it, then that is certainly your choice. But if you want to build something that has durable, sustaining value for someone, you want to think, where can I find Peter? And where can I find a million more? Yeah. And I think that this could have the promise for that. So I've been trying to help people go uh, past demographics, so past gender, um, and into people's minds, the way they think, because we're all remarkably rich and alike and different and incredible. And to just focus on that um, with respect to the Peter, to understand how he thinks, what are his philosophies, how does he make his decisions about what he wants to plant and whether he wants to plant it. Um, to really understand that so that you can support him even better, uh, those million Peters. Um, so that takes some research, that takes some getting out there and listening to people uh, regardless of their demographics. Experts, thank you for your time and for your feedback. And let's have a round of applause for Garden Answers. Thank you. Thank you all.